Welcome. You have just entered the school zone. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us. So we are here about ready to take on Dowd. And in the last episode, we worked our way through uh, the rest of the flooded district. Central Rudshore, I guess they call it, uh, which is the location of this Chamber of Commerce here. We took out a bunch of whalers and now we are ready to confront Dowd. So let's do that. Uh, these minions of his are going to come rushing at us, I believe. So let's... So let's uh, trap this area with some spring razors. Booby traps are always fun. Master, what is it? Forgive me. Almost got spotted. A sentry glimpsed into the streets near the green refinery. Very well. I suspect that in time he will come to me here. Now please lead me and be vigilant. Okay, we should be good to go. Why don't we try to snipe one of his minions here? And we got both of them. No way. That was fantastic. Okay, so we are going to try to snipe him from a distance. Do you think you can hide from a hunter of men? Uh, unless he stays behind his little books there. I know your footsteps, Corvo. Do you think you can hide from a hunter of men? I know we're being really cowardly here, but... Uh, I know your footsteps, Corvo. Ooh, more of them. Bip. Bip. Oh my god, did I just peg his head to the wall? I did. Oh, I love when that happens. It's classic. Okay, so we may not have needed the... Oh, here's one. Here we go. Perfect. Okay, so there's Dowd over there. Is this how you protected the Empress? <laughs> He's taunting us now. We're gonna leave those spring razors there just in case. Afraid to face me? I'm disappointed. Why don't we beam up here and see if we can uh, snipe him from above? Is this how you protected the Empress? Afraid to face me? I'm disappointed. Let's grenade him, why not? Is this how you protected me? <laughs> okay. So that was enough to take him down. Oh, more of them. Let's stop time for this. Okay, why don't we do a grenade there, and uh, why don't we do a stick now? You know what? Probably shouldn't have done that because now it's going to kill him. Oh, maybe not. Okay. Dang, I'm just screwing up. There we go. Okay, now we can grenade him. In fact, let's do a little sticky grenade. Perfect, okay. So now we can... Uh... Yeah, that did the trick. Okay, so now we can take our time. Dowd's kind of wounded. He's sitting down in this little corner. And uh, we can just kind of school the rest of this area. So we'll get to him in a minute. Make him wait. Wait for his fate. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's see here. Uh, we need the key to unlock that, so let's just grab that real quick. Come back upstairs. I believe that's right here. Perfect. Probably just a little bit of loot. Yep. 
Carmine Jewel Box. So Carmine is one of the wealthy families. He probably nabbed that. Let's see what this letter to Dowd says. Dowd, I am satisfied. Corvo would have been very useful to me, but your improvisation was exemplary. So exemplary means commendable or noteworthy. Him taking the fall for the crime simplified matters greatly. I hope you are equally satisfied with the payment. I shall contact you again shortly for additional assignments. HB, who is Hiram Burroughs, who's now out of commission. Okay, so I think we got a couple of books over here. Let's see here. We read The Lighthouse at Dunwall Tower. Uh, I don't think we've read these other couple. Redshore Commerce. Red, the Redshore Chamber of Commerce. Let's check that out. Excerpt from a book covering the various districts across Dunwall and their histories. Once the financial heart of the empire, the Rudshore Financial District was a hive of trade activity. No district employed more barristers, which we talked about in a previous episode, accountants, or indeed more security. And no part of Dunwall saw a greater flow of coin. When the flood barriers broke and the waters rolled in, the looting that followed was accompanied by an epic period of chaos and butchery. Those who could withdraw and move their assets did what they could. Others, with their wealth tied up in grand mansions and artwork, lost it all. Ain't that the truth? When the last of the high society set had withdrawn and the lights went dark, Redshore was a gloomy, crumbling shell of what it had been, inhabited by thieves, wild dogs, and rats. Once great palaces of commerce sat empty and haunted. So commerce means uh, the business of exchange of goods and services comes from the old French word for trade, or came to house killers and mercenaries as well as anyone else looking to hide from the city watch. In mere months, the flooded district was settled upon as the most proper name for the place. All right, let's read the Royal Protector. Excerpt from a historical record of government positions and ranks. Throughout the ages, rulers have always faced attempts at their lives. Once in a generation, the empire is rocked by the death of a powerful political or religious figure. As such, city-states across the Isles have devised varying strategies for protecting their leaders. In the capital city of Dunwall, each new emperor is allowed to appoint a royal protector. This is far more than a trusted bodyguard, much more revered than the hand-chosen guards defending Dunwall Tower or the food tasters. So most of you will probably know this already, but food tasters are hired help that eats a bit of food and takes a sip of a drink for a VIP in order to make sure that it hasn't been poisoned. Not much used these days except for the occasional threatened dignitary, but it was quite a job role back in the day when assassinations by poison were more prevalent. The royal protector is a court figure given enormous latitude, which in this context latitude means a certain amount of trust of thought and freedom from restrictions, who keeps constant company with the highest ruler in the known world. At the age of 12, the young monarch participates in the selection process, making the final decision about who will safeguard his or her life. While most of those chosen as royal protector have been men, several times throughout history a woman has served well in the role. Ah, uh, you never know, that could be a clue to dishonor too. For the first time in Dunwall's history, a monarch has been slain by her own bodyguard. At the time of this writing, with Dunwall in the grip of the worst plague ever recorded, our fair Empress Jessamine Caldwin has just been murdered. So this book must have been written right after that. The deed was done by her former royal protector turned assassin, Corvo Otano, who is still sitting in Coleridge Prison awaiting his deserved execution. Some argue that it is worth noting that Corvo is the first royal protector in the history of the Empire born outside of the city of Gristol. Alright, and Dowd's Log. The latest log entry. 18 years on this wretched rock, in this city of filth. So he's probably talking about Gristol because he comes from uh, Circonos. I felt the blood of scholars, of noble pedophiles, of guildsmen, of unfaithful lovers, politicians who were far too just for their own good, and of law enforcers who came too close to bringing the wrong man to justice. Why should an empress be any different? Why should I feel the entire weight of this dying city crushing down on my back? Corvo, Lord Protector, is of Circonos, just as I once was. I might have known that fact already, but it didn't matter until I recognized it in his face. It brought back distant memories of home, and the optimistic young man I once was. What would I find if I went back there? Would I find that it has rotted from the inside, just like Dunwall? Or will it only appear that way because I'm the one who's rotted? 
All right. So we are starting to get some clues that Dowd is having a crisis of conscience. Let's pick up our uh, spring razors. See if we can loot these guys real quick. Yeah. So I think there was a remedy. Yep. Here we go. We don't need that. Okay, and there's a few items down here we can grab. So, let's see here. I'm going to use one more just in case this is an elixir. It's not, but there is one right here. Awesome. Okay, let's see what else we got going on. That's one of the heads. Oh, lordy, lordy. Okay. <laughs> All right. What do we got going on here? Nothing. Can't loot him. There we go. <laughs> He's stuck to the wall. Pick up the bolt. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Anything else we can uh, grab from around here? There's got to be something. There's a couple of books. Here we go. Empress Jessamine Caldwin. Okay, we read that in Dunwall Tower, but we haven't read The Eradication of Black Sally. Let's check it out. Excerpt from a popular story of crime and daring by Jules Robin and the City Watch. Before Slackjaw ran the streets in the distillery district, there was no boss more ruthless, violent, or dedicated to squeezing the average citizens for coin than Black Sally. Like so many from Morley, she was pale-skinned and green-eyed, with hair as black as the void. They say she started young, and as a girl, she'd stun a man with her looks, coming upon him in the alley, then smile a one-sided smile and suddenly run him through with a knife. She'd have his money and be on her way before he breathed his final breath. As a boss, she was worse, ruling over the meanest street gang Dunwall had seen up to that time. Her operation touched everything from shipping to prostitution. She even had a racket going with the Baker's Guild. So a racket in this context means the activity of organized crime, such as bootlegging or extortion. A finger in every pie indeed. One man, Captain Jules Robin, made it his mission to stop her and kept the case going for half a decade. Black Sally met her end when Robin and his men lit smoke fires in barrels near the warehouse where she hid out during the day. As she and her gang rushed into the streets, terrified the building was burning, Captain Robin and his top officers threw nets over them and ran them all through with blade and pistol shot. All right, so here's an interesting question. Have there ever been any famous female gang leaders in history? Actually, there have. Not as many as men, but there have been some, no doubt. A few that come to mind are Stephanie St. Clair, Griselda Blanco, Rosetta Cutolo, Pearl Elliott, and of course, Ma Barker. All right. Okay, is that everything here? That audiograph player is not working, and yeah. Okay, so let's head on out and confront Dowd. Okay, here we go. I have one more surprise for you. I asked for my life when I killed your empress and took her daughter. Something broke inside me. Now I see the design on the back of your hand. The mark of the outsider himself. And I remember all I've done. The years of waiting for the right moment to step forward from an alley. And drive a knife between the ribs of some noble. All the money exchanging hands. From one rich bastard or another. Killing for one of them one year, then... Being paid to kill him in return the next. I remember bending at the shrines, listening as the outsider whispered that I was going to change things, that I was somehow important. It felt good. It made me believe I was powerful. But what have I accomplished? More than you have, or much less. Now I want nothing but to leave this city and fade from the memory of those who reside here. I've had enough killing, so my life is in your hands. Make your choice. So some of you may recognize his voice, actually, as Michael Madsen. 
All right, so Dowd's uh, an evil assassin, but he is uh, having a crisis of conscience, and I do believe in salvation, so we'll give him a chance to live. Plus, if you ever play the DLC, uh, it can change the way that the ending of that works, and uh, he ends up being sort of a hero in the end, kind of saving uh, Emily from... Uh, from the end and allowing her to uh, be rescued by Corvo. So we're gonna back up and sheath our weapon. And you choose mercy. Extraordinary. All right. So that's our little good deed. Okay, so we got a little uh, bone charm. It said spiritual pool. Let's see what that's all about. Whoops. You regenerate mana slightly faster. All right, now that's useful there. Another one actually I'd forgotten about that I usually get much earlier in the game. So we're going to look for what we can get rid of. Ah, we don't need quick dodge anymore. Okay, very nice. I'm happy with that. Let's see uh, if there's anything else we can grab from around here. Maybe something from up here. Ah, a couple of coins. Okay, so let's start working our way down. Here we go, here's a few things. Ah, there we go. Not bad. Okay, so I'm just going to take a quick peek down here, over here. Jessamine Boulevard. Okay, so we can't really go much farther there. So let's just start heading back up. Okay, I think it's called Jessamine Boulevard because there's a statue of the late Empress. Okay, so let's head on over and uh, oh wait, I think we might be able to Jumped her right there. Yep, we can. Okay. Save herself a little bit of time. Okay, so this is the door that we couldn't open when we first came through here. Uh, we came through this window. And uh, there were a couple of items that we left behind. Namely, the things in this desk we couldn't open without the key. Just a little bit of uh, loot, I believe. Pocket watch. All right, so yeah, we're doing fine on uh, on money, but you know, if it's there. I'll grab it. Okay, I see a painting there. Let's grab that. The Torturer's Quarter Nionic Groan. Well, there's a word for you. <laughs> Aren't you glad you're tuned into the school zone for that one? Quarter Nionic means having to do with quarter nions, which is a very complex mathematical term that's uh, too long to get into here. 
You can research it if you want, but in the most simplest terms, it means a grouping of four. I don't know what a grouping of four has to do with the groans of the torturer, but I'm getting the impression that Sokolov kind of just liked to toot his own horn with uh, titling the paintings the way he does. It's um, certainly one way to self-promote, and uh, from some of the books we've read, he, he sort of uh, made himself famous that way. Good on him, playa. All right, we'll grab that uh, painting and see if there's anything else. Nope. Let's continue making our way down. I see a little note there. Check it out. I don't know why I'm sneaking anymore. Sorry about that. Letter to the director. So that's it. We're closing down after all these years, after we just unveiled the new statue of Jessamine Caldwin. A broken wall and some rising water and we're just going to abandon the building and split up our offices in the lesser districts? Are you insane? Has your brain turned to plate rats? Have you been drinking the outsider's piss? <laughs> Any of these explanations I would accept sooner than the relocation assignments we all found on our desks this morning. If this truly is how you plan to operate as our director, then no, I will not accept my relocation orders. Consider this my resignation. Percival Cox, former deputy chairman, Rudshore Chamber of Commerce. All right, he ain't playing. Okay, although if you look at it, <laughs> it's hard to blame him. Oh, I see a rune. Nice. Two out of five. We still got, geez, we still got three more to get on this mission. That's awesome. All right, so uh, I'm not going to bother looking because I think we only have one, but uh, we have reached the sewer area, and we are going to tackle all this in the next episode. So once again, thank you so much for tuning in. Some of you guys have started sharing the videos. I really appreciate that. Hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and we'll see you in the next episode.